Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now today's video is going to be the long-awaited Everlane review, first impressions and mini haul. So I have never ordered from Everlane before. Um, I first learned about this brand during the summer. Uh, a few of you guys actually recommended the brand to me and for a long time they didn't actually ship to here in the UK. However, it's been a recent change for the company that they have expanded their shipping internationally. So I thought I would give them a try. Right now, before I get started with all of the pieces which I've bought, I've got some nitty gritty stuff to go through with you guys. So I have my trusty notepad here because I've made quite a lot of notes on some of the bits and pieces that I wanna talk you guys through. So, Everlane, I made an order, six items. I placed this order on the 23rd of September. Now, when I was placing this order, I kind of wanted to pick items which A, I would wear, so that they're not wasteful, um, B, items which are classic and which I wear all the time, which to be honest with you is the majority of my wardrobe. And also I wanted to try items from different categories. So I didn't just wanna buy six cashmere jumpers because what's the point? They're all essentially gonna be the same. So I've ordered six items. The order total was $469, which I know I'm a UK blogger. So for those of you guys who are also in the UK, that roughly equates to about £357. That's for six items. However, tax, customs and tax comes into play for those of you who do not live in the US. So I paid $161.33 which roughly equates to about 123 pounds, which takes my grand order total to 480 pounds, which was $630. Um, now, there was one item that I was actually, or that I originally had in my basket when I was placing this order, and it was a pair of boots, and I think they were around about $230. They were the Boss boots, and they're beautiful, they're still haunting me now that I didn't buy them, but when I had them in my cart, it took my order total, including taxes, to over a thousand dollars, and I just couldn't, so I had to take them out. Um, 123 pounds for tax is just, ugh, like it makes me shudder, but this is all in the name of science. <laughs> So let's move on right now. I chose the free shipping option because I'm cheap and because I really didn't want to spend any more money. So if you make an order over, a, oh wait, hang on though, no, over a hundred US dollars, if you're international, then you get free standard international shipping. Standard shipping is seven to 14 days, which I think sometimes you read and you instantly assume that it's just going to be seven days. Not the case. Um, now, if you wanted to pay for speedier shipping, the next option is expedited shipping, which is $75 per order, regardless of what you've got in there. So you could literally have ordered one t-shirt and it would cost you $75 for expedited shipping. And that takes five business days. Mm, I wouldn't have said that super fast, but Okay, now I haven't really done a lot of research on the US shipping option because it doesn't apply to me. So if you are in the US, then I'd head over to the Everlane website because I'd imagine they're gonna be much speedier than for us internationals. Now, when I placed this order, there were two items, and I'll tell you which ones when I get through these packages. Uh, there were two items which were on, well, one was on back order and one was on pre-order. So before I ordered them, it told me that these items weren't going to be shipped until a certain date. So I knew ahead of time that there were going to be items which weren't going to arrive with the majority of the order. So I had three packages arrive. The first package, which was the main part of the order, and it had four items in it. That one arrived on October the 2nd, which is a grand total of 10 days from the order date that it took to arrive. Second package arrived October 10th, and the third and final package arrived yesterday, which was October 16th. Right, now that's some of the nitty gritty out of the way. I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of information at the end of the video, just like a summary on what I think in general. But I've currently got three boxes down here, or two boxes and one paper bag. 
um, because of course it did arrive in three packages. So I'm going to start by unboxing the first box and then we can have a look and see what's inside and start reviewing this Everlane stuff. Right, so I have box number one here. I'm going to try and zip this open one-handedly. Not sure how this is going to go because I'm not prepared <laughs> as per usual. Right, let's have a look. Ah, uh, okay, I've opened the wrong one. <laughs> ignore that, let's ignore that. I've opened the wrong one. This is the box that I wanted to open because I want to open these in the order that they arrived. Um, just because to me, it makes, ugh, it makes sense. Don't try this at home, folks. Right, item number one. This is the cotton box tea with a pocket. Now I've gone for this one in a size medium. It looks, it looks quite short in the body. I'm going to try it on in a minute, um, but it looks quite short in the body. I also went for black, but this looks, almost looks a bit blue. It looks very like washed out. Um, let's give it a try and see. Okie doke. It's quite short. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my jeans that I've currently got on come up to here, so you could definitely tuck it into the jeans. In fact, let's let's just try it, shall we? Just for argument's sake, it can definitely be tucked in. But if you've not got high-waisted jeans on, oh, sorry, I need to do some adjusting, then it's not really gonna work. And I actually sized up in this, so hmm. Uh, now I can't remember some of the other t-shirt designs. They've got lots and lots of other t-shirt designs. They've got slim fitting ones, long sleeve ones, a whole variety and all in lots and lots of different colours as well. So I'm not sure if maybe I've just gone for a shorter cut. I didn't think it was a shorter cut, but this is the sort of boxy, little bit more masculine like boyfriend fit t-shirt that I would normally go for, which is why I ordered this. The fit, yeah, it's all right. I feel like the sleeves could be a bit wider for a boxy cut. These aren't really boxy cut sleeves. They're they're quite tight actually. They don't really have a lot of room in there. I'd say size medium is about right for what I would kind of wear over the top, normally a blazer or something. It's 100% cotton. You can machine wash this cold. Just make sure you've got a really good uh, fabric detergent. Yeah, it feels nice. I'm just, I'm not completely sold on this length. I would prefer it to be at least maybe two inches longer. There could be pros and cons to that. If you don't like having a bulk of fabric, if you're going to tuck it in, then obviously this doesn't have as much fabric. But if you're going to wear slightly lower rise jeans, you've not got a lot of room to play around. Price-wise, it was $16, uh, which is about £12. So that's a pretty good price for a basic. I'm just not sure if I would order this all the way from the, from the States just for a basic t-shirt though. Uh, so let's move on to the next item. Next item out of box number one is this. This is the Cotton Mock Neck Crop Knit. So it is technically, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It is technically a jumper or a sweater, um, but it's made out of 100% cotton. Uh, I've gone for a size medium, and this one here is the navy. Now I liked this on the website so much that I did actually order a second one of these, but in a stripe, which I will get to in a moment. Um, but let's try this one on. Now again, this one is quite short in the body, but it does say in the item description that it is a cropped style. Um, so this isn't really something that you need to tuck in. I suppose if you're wearing a slightly lower rise jean, you could do a bit of a front tuck like that. Otherwise, I think this is just the kind of thing that you can blouse over. Slightly thicker option other than a t-shirt that you could wear underneath a blazer if you want to keep warm at this time of year. Feels really nice, feels really breathable. I think as knitwear goes, 100% cotton is definitely a nicer feel on the skin. There's no itch to it, it feels breathable, in particular around the armpit region. Um, now I would have said that I did size up in this because I don't like things to fit tight, I don't like things to cling to my body. I like to have, you know, a bit of room to move around. I will say, I wouldn't have said my arms are long, but I think the sleeves are not super long. So if you do have long arms, I'd have a feeling that this is actually going to be quite short on you. I like a sleeve that I can do this with. 
and I can't. Right now, as I mentioned, I bought two of these. This one is the plain navy, but they do come in six colors slash variations. So I have another one down here, which I'll try in a second. That one is a striped option. Funnily enough, the plain options cost $50 the striped options cost 55 so you're paying an extra five dollars for a stripe and here we go i mean were my extra five dollars worth it who knows to be honest i like this one just purely because of the color combination it's like a deep sort of burgundy color and navy stripe and it's just a stripe that's a little bit different i would normally go for a breton stripe with like your classic red, white and navy, um, very Parisian inspired, but this I thought was just a little bit more autumnal. Um, now funnily enough, this is the exact same jumper, bar that $5 difference between the stripe and the non-stripe, but the sleeves on this are actually longer. This is the same size, it's exactly the same fabric, it's 100% cotton, but the sleeves on this one, look, they actually are longer, they come down to here, they're at least an inch, maybe two longer. So that's quite bizarre, not really sure why, but let's roll with it. Um, otherwise, feels exactly the same. Pretty decent, I'd say. Not a bad item to have in your wardrobe. Okay, last item in the box, jeans. I knew I had to try at least one pair of their jeans because I do love to experiment with jeans. I do love to try different brands and give my feedback to you guys. Um, I have a few high strip favourites for denim and I have a few premium denim brand favourites as well. So I'll be interested to see how these fit in with my current faves. Now I've gone for the high rise skinny and I used all of the size guides on the Everlane website when I was picking all of these items. And the leg lengths just were a bit off. They seemed really, really short. So I've actually opted for a tall size. These are 28 tall. Oop, let's see how they fit. Okay, yeah, they're comfortable. They feel all right. Um, apparently they're made of some kind of special Japanese denim, which means that they do stretch and they allow for movement. So they're not stiff and starchy. But according to Everlane, it means that they won't bag because of this special Japanese denim. Now, I've obviously only just tried these on, so I can't comment on that. Love to hear your thoughts. If anyone's got any Everlane denim, how does the Japanese denim fare in comparison to any other denim? Um, first thoughts, initial impressions. Yeah, they fit nice, I'm not gonna lie. They do fit nice for a pair of skinnies, high rise. I'd say they're true to size. They leave me with a little bit of room for the buffet. They feel like you can move in them. I will say they do feel a little bit, I feel like I've got some extra room around the crotch area. Um, but in terms of leg length, I'm very glad that I went for the tall size because these ones fall literally just above my ankle. So if I'd have gone for the regular size, well, they'd have practically been cycle shorts, to be fair. Um, so I'm very glad if you have a 33 to 34 inch inner leg, so that's your inseam measurement, definitely go for the tall size. That is all I will say on that. Um, yeah, they feel nice. Do you know what? They feel like a comfy pair of jeans, something that's nice and flattering that you could kind of wear here, there, everywhere. I feel like they're a pair of jeans I could definitely go out and eat in because they feel comfortable. I'm just doing the squat challenge. But yeah, I wouldn't have said that they're the best fitting jeans. Definitely not the best fitting jeans. This area here around the crotch is bothering me a little bit. Now, the denim is $68, which roughly equates to about £52. So that's kind of like a little bit higher price pointed than Topshop, but not quite and other stories price point. I'm trying to just sort of equate things to shops where I already shop in. So, you know, for denim, I'd say that's relatively reasonable. Right, now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I placed one order, but two of the items, or one was on pre-order, one was on back order. So item number two, or rather package number two that arrived is in this box, which I already opened earlier by accident. Um, and this is the item which I have been most excited to receive because it is 
a blazer. Now, just looking at this blazer, now I've taken the unnecessary plastic off, it looks quite big so I'm hoping that this is going to fit. It's $160 which equates to about £122. Now it does say that it's an oversized fit and I love an oversized fit blazer um, and it is, god it's so long. This is probably one of the longest blazers that I own. It's literally, look at how long that is. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think it's all right. Do you know what? There's a lot of room in the arms. I've obviously got that knit on underneath and I can ruche up the sleeves and move my arms without it feeling tight. So that is a good thing. In terms of size, I would say that's where I've done quite well. I'm wearing a US size six. Now in terms of fabric and feel, it's very thin. I suppose that's that's a bonus in terms of it being lightweight. It is definitely lightweight. I like it. I definitely love the fabric, like this herringbone print. That's 100%, you know, what I would like in a blazer. If I'm being very truthful, though, I don't think it's worth $160. Um, I've had blazers which are much nicer, much nicer in fabric, much nicer in feel from and other stories and I know they cost about 129 pounds which is seven quid more than this one and they just feel nicer they feel better quality they feel thicker uh yeah I'm just I think disappointed is a word I would use for this Okay, moving on to my final item, which I just unpackaged and started waffling on about, but then I didn't realise that the camera had turned itself off. So it is already open because I've literally just done this. Um, now, the last item arrived in this paper mail bag, which I think is excellent. I wish the likes of ASOS and Topshop would start using things like this rather than the plastic bags. Now, this is what was inside that bag. It wasn't packaged like this because, as I said, I've just unravelled it. It had this random bit of plastic wrapped around it. Unnecessary. Evelyn, you don't, you don't need that. It's pointless. So I knew I had to order some of the Everlane cashmere. You guys have been banging on about it. You've all recommended that I try it. They do have something called the $100 cashmere, which is very, very affordable. Um, and that is for the crew neck. I, however, already have a crew neck in black. Um, so I decided to go for a classic roll neck. I had a roll neck in black from about four years ago. I literally just decided it had had its time a couple of weeks back when I got it out of storage. It was a cheapy one. It was from Zara, again from about four years ago, and it cost about $25.99 when I bought it. it. Lasted a long time, but I've decided to upgrade my classic black roll neck to a cashmere one. So I thought I'd give this Everlane one a go. Now, initial first impressions, because I tend to buy M&S cashmere, which is a very affordable at 75 pounds. This feels nowhere near as soft. It doesn't feel as soft, I'm gonna be really honest with you. It just feels, well actually it doesn't, doesn't even feel like cashmere to me. It literally feels like a cotton jumper. It doesn't feel dissimilar to the two cotton jumpers like this one that I featured earlier. It's just that it doesn't have as much of a, um, as much of a, whatever you would call that, a weave to it. It's the weave is much closer. But let's, let's have a try. Right, so this was $120, which equates to about 91 pounds. And I've just put it on over bare skin. And I'm not gonna lie, again, it feels a little bit itchy. And in particular, this here, which when you've got a roll neck on, if it's gonna itch and irritate your neck, that's the worst thing ever. Uh, sleeve length, however, is good. It does have this weird thing on the sleeves where it has quite a deep cuff. The cuff is about three to four inches deep, but then it has a band that cuts the cuff in half and has two sections. I just don't quite understand why you would have that. Um, otherwise, size-wise, I went for a medium, and I'd say actually I probably got that right. I like my polar necks, roll necks, whatever you want to call them, to be a little bit baggier, I don't like them fitting skin tight, I feel like I could wear a vest or a t-shirt underneath this as well if I wanted to layer up when it starts to get really really cold, 
Um, yeah, again, really disappointed with this. It just doesn't feel, doesn't feel like cashmere at all. It doesn't feel soft. Now they are available in seven colors, although I've gone for black. Would I buy another one? I don't think I would, to be honest with you. It's just, just standing here initially having tried it on. Maybe it'll be different after I've washed it. I'll keep you guys up to date, but feels a little bit itchy. And for that reason, I wouldn't spend another $120 when I can buy one similar from M&S, which feels beautiful. Right guys, those were my six items that I ordered from Everlane. I'm gonna go through my final thoughts with you all. So I've got my trusty notepad again because I've just spent some time writing down some thoughts and feelings on Everlane. They're very transparent about their factory. So for each garment that you look at on their website, it will tell you which factory it has come from. You can then click on that factory. It takes you to a separate area on their website where you can read a bit about their factory. It tells you about their employees, tells you lots of different information. On some of the factories, it tells you a little bit more about their process of manufacturing. Um, but there, it was very difficult to find any kind of sustainable facts on there about chemicals used, about how they source their cashmere. It was a little bit tricky. For example, if we're gonna use their $100 cashmere crew neck as an example, it tells you how much their materials will cost, the labor, the transport, the duties, and the hardware, if any. So using that one as an example, their true cost would be $42, um, and then they price that up, or mark it up, shall we say, to $100. There's then this separate little section at the bottom which says traditional retailers would market that item at $210. Now my question would be, who are these traditional retailers? Because this to me just looks like very clever marketing. Because as I used as an example earlier, the M&S Cashmere, if we're gonna just use as a comparison basis, Everlane Cashmere, the Cashmere Basic Crew Neck, that is $100. Now, the M&S Basic Cashmere Crew Neck is $75. Now I know I've got the roll neck on here, but if the crew neck feels the same as this, it doesn't feel as nice as the M&S cashmere. So I know which one I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna go for the M&S, 75 quid. That's really affordable. And I know you might be saying, but Everlane is more ethical than Marks and Spencers. Well, actually, Marks and Spencers are using the plan A for their ethical practices. They've actually been praised for their cashmere ethical practices. So there's no difference in that between the two brands. So I'm just saying, if it were me, I obviously would go and buy M&S for cashmere. For me, if I'm being honest, it's quite pricey. If you take into consideration the expedited shipping, which I would definitely have to use, I can't be waiting 24 days for an order to arrive. I've forgotten about it by the time it arrives. Um, so for me, the taxes and the shipping costs, the shipping times, it's just, no, it just doesn't work. But having said that, that is because I am UK based. For those of you in the US, you might love Everlane because it arrives within a couple of days, you get no taxes charged on it, etc, etc. Having now seen my Everlane order, I'm really glad that I didn't order those boots because a lot of the items here have disappointed me. Don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna wear them. I wanna see how they wear, I wanna see how they wash. Um, a lot of the items are dry clean only, so annoying, but I wanna see how they kind of fare. And they're not items which I'll be like, this is a pile of rubbish. They're just disappointing for the length of time I've had to wait and also for the hype around the brand. I could probably get all of the items that I ordered within this haul in the UK and probably to meet the same ethical standards as Everlane if I did a little bit more resourcing and a bit more hunting around rather than just going to say H&M or just going to Topshop. I think if I did a bit of hunting around, I could find the same items and I could probably get them cheaper because of that tax and shipping cost. So will I be shopping with Everlane again? Well, never say never. Do you know what? If me and Simon go over to the States again, I think they've got a big flagship 
flagship store in New York, I would definitely go in. I'd have a look at all their other items because they did have other stuff that I liked the look of. Um, I would be very tempted to try out another pair of the jeans, maybe in a straight cut. Uh, but I genuinely just don't think it was worth all the hassle being over here in the UK. Hopefully in the future, maybe they might change things. Maybe they might come over to the UK. They might have a distribution center over here, which might make things a lot more helpful. But would I make another order online and have it shipped over here to the UK? No. I wouldn't. If I'm being really honest, no, I wouldn't. It was quite costly. I don't think it's worth the money and the quality for me isn't quite up to scratch of some of the stuff that I can get from some of my favourite brands over here in the UK. Right, there we have it. That was my very honest review of Everlane. I would love to know what you guys think. If you've had a positive or a negative experience, do share all those down in the comments section below. And going forward, we would like to discuss more about sustainability and about ethical practices. So if you've got any favourite brands or any maybe new or emerging brands that you've heard of that you'd like to share with me and Simon, again, leave those down in the comments section below and we will check those out. So that's it for me this time round. Thank you very much for watching as always and I will see you guys next time. Bye!